All right, so we are recording. You should all be asked permission to record. Um, for you, those of you who don't know me, my name is Leanne McAllister. I'm the executive director of the Nevada chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. I'm going to go over just a little bit of housekeeping stuff and then turn it over to our speaker. Um, so Zoom etiquette, um, just keep yourself muted when you're not speaking, but camera on or off, whatever you are comfortable with. Certainly during the presentation, we'll be focused on um, Dr. E and her uh, presentation, although she does have some great um, polling that we'll all be doing with our cell phones, so have those handy. Um, and then, But then at the end, when she's done with her presentation, please turn your camera back on and uh, we'll stick around and chit chat with anyone for as long as they like. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, we're gonna save questions for the end for Dr. E, but if you're as you're thinking of them, if you wanna throw them into the chat, please absolutely do that. Uh, we will send um, slides and recordings to attendees afterwards. And at the end of the CME, there'll be a link for the survey. If you're claiming CME, you can complete the survey. Um, and, but even if you're not claiming CME, if you'd still complete the survey so that we get some feedback on our event and we can approve them in the future. So with that, I'm gonna turn the intro part over to Dr. E. Welcome, thank you. Hi, thank you. Let me see if I can share my screen. Looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this is an interactive lecture, and so I would like you to get your cell phones out, and I will be doing it along with you to make sure it's working. And you will be texting the full phrase, all one word, Kimberly John 941 to the phone number 22333. And uh, a little background, Kimberly Johnson is my director of quality improvement where I work at United Healthcare. And when our team set up the account, you know, she set it up for us. And then we realized afterwards, we, um, we can't really change it. It's just going to be her now forever, whenever any of our team does uh, use the polling software. Once you um, text Kimberly John 941 to the number, you should get a text saying you joined Kimberly Johnson's session. So hopefully that's working for people. And if you're having any trouble, maybe let Leanne know so she can stop me. Yep, I'm in, but certainly let me know if you're having trouble. Okay, so we titled it Lead by Example, and you know we'll get into that more, but just a little bit about myself. My name is Ruthu Ezizachin. I am a board-certified pediatrician. I've been in the Las Vegas area since 2003. And back then I was recruited to come to this area and I thought, I'm just gonna be here for a few years and leave. And it's now been almost 20 years and I don't think they'll ever get rid of me because I really found this to be a great community for a physician who wanted to incorporate themselves into the fabric to um, be a part of something that was evolving. We're still kind of a young community compared to the East Coast and parts of the Midwest where I'm from the Midwest. And so I really, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to collaborate with my colleagues and, and I'm really happy you guys came to join me. Um, I was in clinical practice with Southwest Medical for about a decade and I was their chief of pediatrics. And then I had an opportunity to join the insurance side, Health Plan in Nevada, United Healthcare. And I really thought that the voices of children are often underrepresented um, in some of the larger areas in insurance. And I thought, you know, let's have one of the good guys on that side. And if, you know, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to take it. So that's when I joined United Healthcare. I'm the only pediatrician of all the medical directors covering our state. And I feel pretty proud of that because I give a lot of maternal child health issues a voice. Okay, so we're just going to test it out. And all you have to do is text um, a word about how you're feeling. And what's really neat about this word cloud that's bubbling up is that <clears throat> the answer that's most often uh, entered gets larger. So you can really get a feel for how your um, group is, in this case, feeling. 
happening today in just one word. So I guess we're pretty excited, but a lot of positive energy, and I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> we do need to do some acknowledgments, and I really want to thank Project First Line for helping supply the content for our CME. It is a national collaborative led by the CDC to provide infection control and training and education to healthcare personnel. AAP is a proud sponsor with Project First Line, and our executive director worked hard to ensure our state was able to get this information. The contents of this program do not necessarily represent the policies of CDC or HHS and should not be considered an official endorsement by the federal government. I'd also like to acknowledge the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians for funding and supporting uh, this CME activity. And I'd also like to recognize Make-A-Wish for their support in the event today as well. I am a proud member of the Make-A-Wish Medical Advisory Committee for the past several years. Their ultimate goal in co-hosting this event with the Nevada chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics is to give back to our medical community by offering this opportunity to gain CME credit while also offering a resource to providers to better serve patients holistically, adding in emotional care alongside medical treatment. I'm gonna share this video. We can hear it, but can't see it. A child who is undergoing treatment for a life-threatening medical condition has so much of normal childhood taken away from them, so much of their decision-making uh, ability, so much of their normal experiences with playmates and friends and, and siblings. It is so long and so arduous, it robs so many of the normal childhood experiences um, from a child and from, from their family. As a physician, as a clinician, there is much that we can do. Sometimes we do everything we can do. Sometimes we do too much. You run into a family that is uh, out of control with their life. Uh, they have circumstances imposed upon them that they never would have signed up for or dreamed that they would be in that position. In rare disease, sometimes I can't give a family a diagnosis. Sometimes I have no treatment even if I get the diagnosis and I almost never have a cure. So what can I offer this family that I can't offer much to? There are medications that we can provide, there are treatments that we can administer, and yet there are pieces missing from that that can only be filled by the impact of a WISH experience. A WISH is something that we as a community have said we're going to offer and show our support for a family that doesn't feel very supported sometimes by the medical community. And I think a wish is a really meaningful way that we connect with families that medicine ha doesn't have much else to offer to them. I think for a lot of families it provides anything from respite, sometimes in the middle of care, sometimes it provides a reward at the end of treatment, sometimes it provides a, an oasis or an island where they can seek sort of normality. A wish gives me the chance to give the family something from all of us as a community. It comes from the medical community, it comes from the whole population saying, your child's not forgotten. The beauty of Make-A-Wish is it's incredibly simple. It is that intangible object that, quite honestly, I cannot order from the pharmacy. I cannot write a prescription for. You see a child before they go on their wish, and when they come back with their family after the wish, it's, it's often like seeing a totally different child. You just see it in their faces, this idea of thinking outside their current moment in time. It's an unsaid power that these experiences can give these kids. And you know, these are kids that are living longer. They're living better. They're having more fun in their life. And it all started with one experience, and that was their wish. 
We don't need studies to show this, but now there are studies that are coming out. It just seems so intuitive, right? You have something to look forward to, and it makes you be more compliant with your treatment plan, so then it's going to impact your physical, your emotional, your psychological well-being. It's interesting. The, the uh, study from Israel, it's significant because it's one of the first studies that we've actually looked at regarding the outcome or the impact of a wish uh, looking at the medical aspect of the child. What it does show is that a child that has a wish, there is a measurable change in their outlook. I think, personally, being involved with Make-A-Wish has made me a better physician and has made me think more critically about what I can do outside of just the medicine and just the surgeries and just the procedures to improve the quality of life of our patients and, and their families. My favorite wish is the next one. And the one after that. And the next 10. And the next 100. Because as with life, a wish has less to do with what has been and more to do with what's coming up. Okay, great. So is that the end of the intro, Dr. E? Almost. Okay. Okay, so just kind of gauging if people have heard of Make-A-Wish. And we like that. We like that it's 100%. No one's unfamiliar with Make-A-Wish. And then I have a question. Only children who are terminal can be eligible for wishes. Is that true or false? Couple more seconds. If this is another comment. And you can see that there are um, a group of us that believe it is true. You, you, the children need to be terminal to be eligible. And then there is a, a larger percentage of folks that feel that that's not exactly accurate. <laughs> I have referred a patient to make a wish. In the past. Ooh, to me, this speaks opportunity. So <laughs> if you haven't, I think there might be some great opportunities in the future looking at this holistically to help a child. And what I wanted to share was that um, as I ran across the uh, working with the medical advisory committee, I occasionally do peer to peers. And it was interesting that I ran across a physician who was reluctant to complete the certification because he had the old concept that his patient needed to be imminently terminal in order to receive a wish. And what, what I learned was that over a decade ago, the organization changed and broadened its medical criteria from granting wishes for terminally ill children to granting wishes for children with life-threatening or critical illnesses. And if the child has a condition that's progressive, degenerative, or malignant, he or she could qualify for a wish and they don't have to necessarily be imminently terminal. And so I just wanted to put up the brochure so you could see some of the conditions that may qualify for a wish and realize that there are so many that are out there and opportunities for wishes. And the other thing I really wanted to point out is that wishes, a referral can come in before a child is 18. It doesn't mean the wishes are executed before they're 18. And so there's that little window. Sometimes we have people that move to our community, we identify the needs, it's still going to go through some things, and we think they qualify. If you can get the, the referral in, before they're 18, there's still an opportunity, at least for the Make-A-Wish team to help that family and that child in particular. 
And then the last thing I want to share is Nicholas because he's from Las Vegas. He's one of our kiddos that got a wish. And so I'm just going to play this. It's really brief. Today we are here to unveil Nicholas's outdoor play space. Uh, there's a bunch of sensory items in there, really fun toys, and the space is really made for him to be able to get outside, get some sunshine, and just play and be a you know normal kid and have his space outside. Nicholas, on this day, August 5th, 2020, Make a Wish of Southern Nevada hereby announces that your wish to have an outdoor play area is coming true. <laughs> with one of our incredible partners, Martin Harris, as well as a bunch of contractors to really get this area together. To know that we made Nicholas's wish come true is an amazing feeling for our company. We're proud to be part of it, this opportunity. Every construction worker that came out was so kind. They were always respectful to Nicholas. We could not do this without Martin Harris and community partners like them. We have relied on them totally for their expertise, their work to get this space ready for Nicholas. And really it's, it's a group effort and it's a community effort. Nicholas and his family are part of our community. And so it's so great to see that union between the two and really see them come through for him and make this a really, really awesome experience and really cool wish. More what? More juice? More play. <laughs> he wants to go play some more. <laughs> That was wonderful, thank you. And the brochure that Dr. E mentioned is in the chat as a PDF file so that um, all the participants can download it. And then I just put this up um, in case people did wanna get more information. I saw an opportunity about 60% of people maybe had not participated in referring a child for a wish. So here's some info in case you uh, would like to. Okay, and that's the break. All right, so I'm going to end recording of the introduction.